continue from verse 121. And as you see in the picture, the two armies are lined up and Krishna and Arjuna are right in the center. So we'll start with verse 31. Arjuna Uvacha Tene Yor Ubayor Madhye Ratam Sapaya Me Achuta Yavat Eta Nirikshegam Yotu Kaman Avastitan Kai Maya Saka Yotavantyam Aspin Kana Sabutyame Arjuna starts talking and he says, Tenyo Ubeyo. You know, this is interestingly army is feminine in Sanskrit and it is dual. Tenyo Ubeyo between the two armies. Ratham refers to the chariot, it is masculine and singular. Sapaya. Now derived from the root sa. You know, many firms you will find uh, organizations or even uh, uh, places, they have what is called sapana, the date in which it was established. For those of you who come from the south of India, yeah, probably you know there is a place called. Sanu Murti Alayam. It is at a place called Suchi. Suchi is the name. Can you hear me all right? It is going in and out, uh, Purji. I mean, it's becoming loud, then becoming low. It's coming low? Sometimes low, sometimes high. And it's called Sanu Murti. Sanu is derived from Sa, which means firm, and the Murti is like a dead tree. You have seen a dead tree, it doesn't move at all. And the root Sa is used here to pass the chariot firmly so that it doesn't move. Maybe you put the handbrake as you put in the car. And he addresses Krishna by the name Achuta. Chuta means falling. And Achuta is the opposite of Chuta. You know, when you do the Sadhyavadanam, you say, recite 15 names of Krishna, starting with Achuta. Achuta, Jaramaha, Ananta, Jaramaha, Govinda, Jaramaha, you sip water from your palm of your hand. The very first word used that Achuta. Achuta is someone who does not let you down. You hold him firmly and he doesn't let you down. So he uses Achuta here. I'm holding on to you, in other words. And Rana refers to battle. Sabud Jave, if you split it up, in Saba, Mukta, Yama. Activity which is undertaken together in case of a war, in this case, activity which is war in case Saba, Mukta, Yama. So in these two verses, Arjuna asking Krishna, O oh Krishna, place my chariot in the middle of the two armies so that I may see those who stand here, who want to fight. And I'd like to know with whom I must fight when the battle begins. 
Because Arjuna is such a great warrior, he doesn't want to fight with ordinary people. He wants to see the status of the warriors with whom he is going to fight. So imagine he is talking to Krishna on the battlefield and amidst all of these noise that is taking place. He must have really shouted at the top of his voice to Krishna. And what I would like you to notice here is the humility of Krishna in just obeying Arjuna without a murmur. The Lord obeys him like a servant. So when you hold on to Krishna, he becomes so humble that he wants to serve you like he is doing in the case of Arjuna. So that's a philosophical meaning of this. So going further, the next verse, 23, Yo Chevanan Abhekshekam Ayete Tre Samagata Dasa Rakshasta Turbudhe Yudde Priyatiki Shavaha You know, people have minds which are fragile, and that is what you are going to see, how fragile Arjuna's mind is, even though he is a great warrior. So we are going to watch it now. Yotya manaha, the scripture that we say, ye yotya te te, those who will fight. It's the future participle of Yudha to fight. Those who will fight. Aveche, Sridhita, Ava, Pratichya. It means to perceive or to observe. Teacher itself means eyes, you know. Like you have names, Kamakshi, Meenakshi, Visadakshi. Sorry to interrupt, Guruji. Yes. There is some disturb there is some disturbance in audio here. Can you mute once again, everybody? Uh, well, let me see if I can check the audio. Can you hear me better now? Yes, 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 good. Yeah, I switched over the microphone. As I was saying, Avecha means to perceive. Aham is I. Samagataha, Sama plus Agama came together. Plural, past tense. Samagataha, the people who have come together. He calls them Durbuddhe. Durbuddhi. Dush is the root here, which means bad. You say Dushta is a bad guy. So Durbuddhi is one with a crooked mind. We have been hearing this word crooked very often in the television now. Yudde in battle. Priya Chikir Chavaha Kartum Ichuhu Chikushu Wishing to please or deriving pleasure. Dardarashtra Sya, the son of Dhridarashtra. She is referring to really Duryodhana in this case. So, the gist of the verse is I desire to observe those who are gathered together, who come together with a view to fight with me, wishing to please in battle whom? Duryodhana, the crooked-minded son of Dhridashtra. You know, some people might ask this question, why is it that Duryodhana was able to assemble 
such a large army, even though people knew that he was not on the right lines. It's because in India, the family ties are so strong. Those who are connected with the family and they have received favors in the past from the family, continue to support them even though they, though they know that the family is wrong or somebody is wrong there. So here, many armies joined. It's an alliance, Duryodhana, because either Duryodhana has done some favors to them, they have received it, or they feel that they are committed to this person. I don't want to change because they are either married in the families or they are relatives among themselves or they have received some favors. So they have formed an alliance there, even though they know. So that's why they want to please Duryodhana. So they are together in the battle wanting to fight. So Arjuna is now observing those people who are assembled to fight. And those who are really wanting to please Duryodhana, the crooked-minded son of Dhridharashtra. Watch this word, crooked-minded, because you see how his mind is going to change. Going further, verse number 24. Sanjaya uvacha yeva mukto rishi kesho guda kese na bharata Senayor ubayor madje stapayit paratotamam. Sanjay Vajaya Sanjay said, What did he say? Yevam ukto. Having said that, Krishi Kesho refers to Krishna. Here you will find many of these names referring to Krishna in different parts. Krishi Kesho, one with a beautiful hair. Guda Kese Nabharata. By whom? By Arjuna. And Arjuna is called here Guda Kese Guda means sleep or being dull and lazy. Guda Kese One who has overcome Ise one who has overcome sleep, one who has overcome the dullness, one who has overcome the tamoguna, ever alert. So it's an adjective for Arjuna, Guda Keshena, Bharata. This is Sanjaya is telling now the scenario changes to Sanjaya and Dhridrashtra and Sanjaya Vacha. The television camera is now focused on Sanjaya and Dhridrashtra and Bharata is a title or the description given to Dhridrashtra because he is a descendant of Bharat. The name Bharat has come from that. Sakuntala and Dushyanta had a son called Bharat. So from Bharat, the descendant is Dhridrashtra. So he says, Eva Mukto Rishi Kesho, Guda Kese na Bharata, Sene or Ubiyor Matthe, Sapyutta, Rathottama. So thus spoken to Krishna Rishi Kesho, Guda Kayaha Nidrayaha, Tasyaha Ishena, one who has forsaken sleep, Arjuna. Now, Bharat here is the address made by Sanjaya to Dhridrashtra. Senior Rubyor Madhye, between the two armors, Sapyatva, placed firmly, Ratottama, the best of chariots. So Sanjaya is telling Dhridrashtra what is happening in the war field. Being thus addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna, having stationed the best of chariots, Ratottama, O oh, Dhridharashtra, in the midst of the two armies, he continues. In verse 25, Bhishma Drona Pramukataha 
सर्वेशाम च मही चिता उच पार्थ पश्यता सब वेता भीष्मण प्रमुखता वेर डिड यू पार्क दिस चैरियट राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ भीष्म एंड द्रोण देर कुड बी ए हिडन मोटिव वाय कृष्णा पार्क इट देर बिकॉज भीष्म एंड द्रोण वेर मोस्ट रेस्पेक्टेड बाय अर्जुन यू नो वेन यू सी समन who is very dear to you your mind goes in a different direction when you see an enemy then your mind goes in a an absolutely opposite direction somebody who hates you you don't feel like looking at him or your anger goes your blood pressure goes up if you had parted before duryodhana maybe there would have been no bhagavad gita you would have started the war because arjuna has come fully prepared to fight and is ready to shoot the arrows but for some reason krishna parted before bhishma and drona facing pramukataha mukam means face pramukataha is facing in front of sarvesham all cha and mahishitam there are other kings also they are called in this case mahishitam mahim chayati which is rulers of the earth wa cha partha cha o partha in front of bhishma and drona and all the rulers of the earth krishna just says o partha you are addressing arjuna as partha pashyetan samavetan kurunidi pashya etan samavetan kurun plus iti this is a sandhi one single word but there are five different words joined together pashya etan samavetan kurun iti Pasha means the etan these some of etan gathered together the kuru descendants of kuru iti so so Krishna is saying O oh, Partha Arjuna see now all these kurus gathered together having part the chariot in front of Bhishma and Drona Partha. Arjuna's name Kunti. Arjuna's mother Kunti was also called Prita. So Prita's son is called Partha. Krishna, having been a charioter, but Arjuna is called Partha Sarathi, one who was driver to Partha. So let's go further to the next one. Tatra Pasya Sitan Partha. पितृन अत पिता महान आचार्यान्तुलातृन पुत्रान पौत्रा सखी हियर इज गिविंग अ लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल दीज रिलेटिव रेडी टू फाइट विद अर्जुन एंड स्टैंडिंग बिफोर इन द बैटल फील्ड वॉट इट इज ई तत्र पश्चा Tatra means there. Apashyata, sa sitan, those who were standing there. By whom Partha Arjuna, Pitrun, Atha, Pitru means father, Pita Mahan grandfather, Acharyan the teachers, the preceptors, the gurus, Bhagwan. maternal uncles bratan you see the similarity between bratha and brother english is brother in sanskrit is a bratha putran sons pautran grandsons sakin friends 
tata also so in, in our custom in sanatana dharma father's brother is called chittappa in tamil or chota father small daddy you respect them as equivalent to father but in fact the shastras prescribe five different kinds of fathers one is the biological father and when the sacred thread is given upanayanam at that time the brahmodesham is either done by a father or father is not there by his brother or someone else who also assumes the role of father and you might have seen in upanayanam they fold a, a big uh, cloth over the head when the gayatri mantram is preached to the boy and the guru or the priest is also there the priest the person who gives you the upadesham and also the mother all the three are there so the priest is also considered equal to a father the fourth father is one who gives you food annadatha and the fifth one is the one who saves you from deep distress or rescues you from a trouble gives you another lease of life life saver is also considered equivalent to a father so here you have so many fathers equivalent to his biological father naturally you will have many grandfathers also and his three acharyas dronacharya kripa acharya and maternal uncles matulan from mata comes matulan and his cousin brothers of course duryodhana and the kauravas are his cousin brothers and their sons grandsons friends with whom he played when he was a kid they were all together and he is all he is all of them standing before him for fighting his mind you know starts working these are people with whom i played you get nostalgic memories of your childhood these are the very people with whom i played and we had fun together and i have come here to kill them going further west number 27 ससुरान सुग्रजश्चैव सेनयोर उभयोरपि तान समीच्छ स कौंतेयः सर्वान बन्धुं अवस्थितान कृपया परया विष्टो विशीदन्नितं अब्रवीत Sasuran in Hindi, many of you know Sasuran means brothers, fathers in law. Sasuran. Su krida ha. Sustu krida yasta saha. You see how the words are so beautiful in Sanskrit. Su krida ha is sustu krida yasta saha. One who has a good heart. One who is wishing well for you. friends are of different kinds there are high and by friends there are also very close friends they may even criticize you at times but they mean well for your future they mean well for your health their heart is good so sukhrdaha is different from sakhi here that is also included sukhrdaha well wishes the close friends serio rubio rapi in between the two armies tan samichya tan tat that samichya he observed that who kaunte yaha here arjuna is called the son of kunti kaunte yaha so you will find lot of adjectives coming up and also descriptions for a single person with different ways of addressing him kaunte yaha son of kunti 
सर्वान बंधुन अवस्थितान सर्व प्लस बंधु प्लस अवस्थितान ऑल रिलेटिव आर स्टेशन डेफ ही लुक्स एट दम एंड वॉट हैपन्स टू हिम हिज माइंड गोस इन अ डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन he thinks of what is going to happen if i kill all these people where will they be will i be happy you know people suddenly change they come with a certain purpose but they suddenly change their mind i have seen it happen in weddings you know the daughter is married off and then the daughter's parents they are goody goody and they talk very nicely sweetly until the time the mangal sutra goes on the daughter's neck the next moment you the whole attitude changes they will no longer care for the boy's parents or boy's side and this is what we see in true life you take product selling particularly in india when the product is sold until then the salesman will talk to you nicely because he wants to make a sale the moment the product is sold his mind changes next day you say it's not working so i can't do anything sir you go to the service department he will wash his hands off completely no responsibility whatsoever the moment the sale takes place mind changes likewise here he takes a look at all these people his mind shifts radically he says he is filled with compassion kripaya what kind of compassion paraya extreme parameshwaran we call you know ishwaran who is the top most supreme god so likewise here is supreme compassion kripaya avishta he is filled with pity vishidan said vishada yoga vishin avishta or come with pity you know there are different aspects in which the mind changes the first one is what is called raga raga is emotional attachment something with which you are attached I mean, in this case the relatives with whom we have been attached from childhood then it becomes shoka shoka means it becomes filled with sorrow so he is getting filled with sorrow here in the last stage as they say it goes into moha which is delusion you get into a situation when you oh, you are caught up with attachment followed by sorrow because you you lose it what will happen that sorrow comes before even losing after losing it's even more then you get into a state of delusion oh, why i did it and why should i do this you know that situation is what arjuna is seeing now he sees his fathers in law friends in the army is and seeing all these relatives the kinsmen standing ready to fight with him he is overcome with emotional attachment to them and and start speaking very sorrowfully filled with deep pity what is going to happen i am going to kill all these people people with whom i had some very good relations they are close to me and if i kill them what is going to happen is mind starts working in the direction so going further arjuna uvacha drishtve mam swajanam krishna युयुत्सम सबुपस्थित सीदंती मम गात्रणि मुखम च परिशुष्यति 
ವೇಪತುಶ್ಚ ಶರೀರೇ ಬೇ ರೋಮಹರ್ಷಶ್ಚ ಜಾಯತೆ ಸೊ ದೃಷ್ಟ್ವಾ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸೀನ್ ವಿ ಲರ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ದೃಷ್ಟ್ವಾ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸೀನ್ ಇಮಂ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ವ ಜನಂ ಸ್ವ ಜನಂ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಜನಂ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ಯು ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಿಲೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ your brothers your sisters they are all your own swajanam you you some desirous of fighting all these people have come to fight with arjuna sampastitam we learnt it before who have gathered together who assembled together having seen these people what happens you know when the emotional attachment is too strong there is a body language they, they call it body language if if you love somebody and you really like you feel like hugging your eyes goes up you have a smile on your face and you walk very briskly towards the person all this is body language this is transformed whatever happening in the mind is transformed into your body language just imagine you are going to see somebody who hates you you feel like walking away you, you don't feel like even smiling you don't feel like even saying hello to him so this is every day you see it so one this case arjuna having seen all his relatives who want really fight with him assembled together there is a body reaction in him ಸೀದಂತಿ ಮಮ ಗಾತ್ರಿ ಗಾತ್ರಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಮಮ ಮೈ ಸೀದಂತಿ ದೇ ಫೇಲ್ ದಿ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಮೈ ಲೆಗ್ಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೂಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂಗ್ತ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಮುಖಂ ದ ಮೌತ್ ಚ ಪರಿ ಸುಷ್ಯತಿ ಇಟ್ ಡ್ರೈಸ್ ಅಪ್ for something dry in hindi you call sukka right sukka is coming from the word sushya parisushyasi the, the throat the mouth gets parched up want to drink water that's why you give water to somebody who is emotionally disturbed because the mouth tends to get dry up so a little sip of water is always good vepatuscha is trembling my body sharira me trembling roma harshascha jayate roma means hair harsha means standing on end harshascha jayate krishna look at looking at all these people my my close relatives and my best friends they are all my swajanam they are all standing here very eager to fight with me my limbs fail i can't even stand my mouth is parched up my body is trembling my hair is all standing on end i don't know there is something wrong with me no this is a bodily reaction which come from his mind you see the connection between mind and body so closely it is explained here and this is applicable today to every human being we all go through this process every day every day you watch people and you can see how their body language is according to their mind you may say well some people hide it they may be politicians <laughs> the politicians are those who are effectively able to hide their feelings but it is there stored somewhere it will it will show up sometime somewhere okay let's go to the next verse gandivam samchate hasta tvakchaiva paridahyate nacha shaknomi avasthatum brahmati vacha me manaha 
Many of you know Gandibam is the name of Arjuna's bow. It's a noun. Gandibam. From Satyas, it is slipping away. From where? Hastat. Fifth Vibhakti, masculine. Hastat. Some of you who attend the, the Sanskrit lessons may know. Falani Vrichat Patanti. I explained it before. From the tree, the fruits are falling from the tree. So Hastat here is from hand. Tvak refers to the skin. Eva, Tvakeva also. In addition to my body trembling, the bow is slipping away from my hand. I'm not able to even lift it. My skin. What is happening to my skin? Pari dahyate, pari plus daha. Dahanam, you know, burning. Heats up. The skin is heating up. I feel it is getting warm. Why you get temperature, a fever, you get because there is a bodily reaction and the body gets heated up. Here also the same thing is heating up, like you get fever. Na shakno me. Shakti, strength, energy. Na shakno me, not able to. Avasthatum. Sa, I mentioned earlier. It also applies here to stand. Avasthatum to stand. Brahmativa, Brahma is the root. Brahma could also lead to hallucination, you know. What do you think sometimes? But it's not really true. Brahma. In Tamil, they say Brahmai. Brahmai Purchambol Rikabrimba. So you are affected in mind due to something and you are not able to see things correctly. It's a hallucination, so it's called Brahma. It's reeling. Me manaha, my mind. The bow, Gandiva, is slipping from my hand and my skin burns all over. I'm not able to even stand. My mind is kind of reeling, as it were. I don't know what is happening to me. There is some bodily reaction which is unpleasant. This is what Arjuna is telling Krishna. Going further, verse number 131. Nimitta pasyami viparita keshava nacha shreyo anupasyami hatva svajana mahave You know how mind has changed. The same Arjuna called two verses back, Durbuddhe, people with crooked mind. He accuses them, people with crooked mind. Now you see, he says, Svajanam. They are people, my people. See how the mind is suddenly transformed. So in actual life, this happens. You trust someone, that they will be doing something and suddenly their mind changes. It happens in deals, you know, business deals also. The business slips in the last minute. You are expecting it, it will come, but it goes somewhere else. So, it's a lesson that you can't trust things to happen 100% your way. It might slip away. What do you do in such a case is a lesson taught by Gita. Now, in support of what he is thinking, Arjuna gives further evidence. Nimittani, Nimittani. We believe in omens, you know. In fact, many people believe in omens. Even in, in England, you can't walk under a ladder. It's not good to see a black cat. People have horseshoe fixed on their doors. 
so we have many good and bad omens both if the right eye kind of wings you know on its own it's considered to be a good omen for men but bad omen for women so arjuna says here nimitta anicha pasyami i see omens viparitani not good omens but bad omens viparitani one which has bad consequences and he calls krishna as keshava another name for krishna o oh, keshava o oh, krishna nacha seyo anupashyami shreyaha anupashyami shreyaha means something good some benefit i do not see any benefit anything good in what in hatva in killing swajana my own people my own relatives are away in battle and keshava o oh krishna in addition to my bodily reactions which are not pleasant i see bad omens and i don't see any benefit in killing these people in battle what do i get you see how he is justifying his own thinking now and people tend to do that when I mean, they think something which they think is right could be a delusion they would like to justify it you watch people they will justify whatever they do is correct by giving you additional evidence or something else in arguments it goes like this until the time the delusion itself is changed by someone else so in this case arjuna is strengthening his own thinking by saying oh i see very bad omens and what will i get this person who has fought so many battles against kauravas and he has come ready now he says what is the benefit i am going to get by killing all these people see how the mind has changed going further verse 32 नकांक्षे विजय कृष्ण न च राज्य सुखा कि राज्य न गोविंद किं भोगेर्जीवित नांक्षे कांक्षे मीन डिजायर वॉट समबडी वॉन्ट्स टू डू न कांक्षे मीन neither desire vijayam you know it's a pretty simple word victory we recently had vijaya dasami signified victory of rama over ravana krishna he is addressing krishna as krishna here nacha rajyam our kingdom sukha nicha and pleasures and chai is a conjunction here kim what no rajena no is here of what of the kingdom rajena krishna suddenly gets the name govinda here you know govinda means go is referring to cows vindati iti govinda ha one who tends the cows a cow herd It's called Govinda. Gives them various kinds of names. Bhogai, bhogai come from buj to enjoy. That's the root word buj. Bhogai he all enjoyments. You go and watch a cricket match. It's an enjoyment. Puja. You go and eat ice cream. Yes, you enjoy it. Bhogai he. jivite na jivin is life and even wa here is even it's also used r so he tells krishna oh krishna i don't want i don't desire victory not even pleasures and and even a kingdom i don't want of what use is this to me of what avail is the kingdom to us Or govinda or enjoyments or even life 
this person who has come to fight to get his kingdom is now telling what's the use of it? After having seen his own relatives there, what is the use? Krishna, I don't want it. Further justification. What is the point in fighting? Because I don't want it. I'll rather go home somewhere. You see how these mind has changed and you see how Krishna is going to respond to the next chapter. So beautiful. It's a lesson which you can practically apply in everyday life. And you will find that you get tremendous confidence out of it. You can compare this with daily happenings and how people react to many things and how you can interpret their actions and how you can even transform if there is a mistake and correct it. Going further, verse 33, Esha Marte Kanchitam no Rajam Bogaha Sukhanicha Ta Ime Avastitha Yudhe Pranam Stekpa Dananicha. Now, all these words, you know, when you split it up, you get the meanings correctly. Esham Arte. Esham Arte is Sandhi. But when you split it up, it is Esham Arte. Esham means whose. Arte for whose sake? For what purpose? For whose purpose? Kankshitam, we desire. No Rajyam, the kingdoms, Bhogagha, all the enjoyments, in Sukhani, Prasarcha. Ime Avastita, the Sandian in Yudde in battle. Pranam Stektva. Stektva means giving up, abandon. What have they abandoned? They have abandoned their own lives. They have come to fight because anytime they may lose their life, these are army people, soldiers who are fighting, who are guarding our frontiers in Kashmir and other places. They have left behind their families. For them, they don't know. Anytime anything can happen. So they have left behind pranam textva, they have left behind their lives. And also dhananicha and wealth. They have left behind their home, they have left behind their car, they have left behind everything they have in order to fight in the battle. It applies today in every situation of army who are fighting for, for the sake of the country. So he says, those for whose sake we desire kingdoms for us, enjoyments and pleasures, they are all here standing in battle. Already they have given up the life and wealth. And in addition, you want to kill them. Because it applies to the Pandavas army also. Because we are fighting for a kingdom for them too. But they have already come here, renounced already life and wealth. What is the point in killing them? This is the argument that Arjuna is taking up. Going further, Acharyaha Pitaraha Putras Tataivacha Pitabaha Matulaha Swaswaraha Pautraha Shalaha Sambandin Sata. Again, he gives a list of all his relatives, includes brothers in law, Shalaha, and Sambandi, Sama Bandam. You know, Bandam means bond. You see the similarity between Bandam and bond. In English, you say bond. And bandham, bound as if by a rope. Even the great goddess has got what is called Pashakaira, you know, Pasham, bandham. Because that is the one which binds people like a rope together. And some bandhis usually relate is bonded by marriage. If you marry your daughter to somebody, 
the, the bridegroom's parents become your sambandis. So there are also sambandis here, relatives who are bonded. Sambandi. So they are all together. Teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, grandsons, fathers-in-law, uncles, all relatives. In India, we, we value this relationship of relationship with people. Yetam nahantum ichami granatopi madusudana apitrai lokya rajasya ketoho kimnumahi krite Yetam, these hantum is killing ichami desire granatopi Gnata, Gna is to kill. But Gna, it says it's a G and A. Gna. Like Vigna, you say. Vigna. Vigneshwaran. There also the Gna comes in. Gnatopi. Even Madhusudana. Madhusudana is the name for Krishna, the one who killed the demon Madhu. It's all Madhusudana. Api even Trilokya Rajasya. Even if I am given the rule over the three worlds, you know, the earth, the upper world, and the lower world. There are three worlds. If I am given that kind of empire, He to ho is purpose. Kim what? Na Mahi Krite. For the sake of this earth. I don't want to kill them for the sake of this earth. Even if I'm given, even if they kill me, or even if I'm given the three worlds to rule, what is the point? So Arjuna is absolutely frustrated as you see, and he wants to just withdraw. At this particular point, we will stop Today's session four, where Arjuna is telling Krishna that he doesn't want to fight anymore and gives various reasons why he doesn't want to fight. See, what's the purpose? I don't want to fight. My own relatives are all gathered together. What's the point? I'm not interested in this kingdom, nor interested in enjoyment. What is the purpose of being a king? After killing everybody, when I go home, there will be nobody. It will be like a huge palace without anybody. Will that be of any purpose? Supposing you are given a 40-bedroom mansion in Sahara Desert with nobody there, how will it be? It will be like something like that. After I win over everything and I go home and I find all the relatives are killed, and I am given the kingdom, the earth to rule over. What is the use? It sounds very logical, isn't it? So Arjuna is under that impression that I don't want to be. So with that, we conclude today's session. And I'm going to unmute you in case uh, anybody has a comment. Yeah, I have unmuted all the participants. I hope you were uh, joined right from the beginning. Some people joined a little later. Anyone has any comments or any questions? Uh, Guruji, this is Sampad here. Yeah. Uh, we have some uh, yoga, right? Karma yoga, Bhakti yoga. Those are different from chapters. Gita is divided into three yoga parts and the karma, we are right now in karma yoga. The first three chapters uh, deal with karma yoga, the, the yoga of action. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. So as you go along, you will find there are lots of truths revealed by Krishna doesn't talk much. I mean, he just obeys whatever Arjuna says in the first chapter. 
Krishna starts talking only from the next verse, next chapter rather, from the 11th verse. Till the time, Krishna is silent. And that is another <laughs> lesson. You want to really diagnose a problem, you have to be silent and listen to whatever the other party says. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> silent spectator, he's just listening to whatever Arjuna is saying. He doesn't open his mouth here. He doesn't say, Arjuna, you now what is it you have come? You better fight now. He doesn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, is removing the delusion and the wrong thinking of Arjuna. And Krishna does a masterly job on that. So you will you'll find it as you go along. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Arjuna. Very good. And I'm going to uh, end this session. And uh, as usual, we'll get the recording done so you can review it anytime. Okay. Hari Om. Thank you, Guruji. Enjoy the weekend. Hari Om, Guruji. Hari Om. Hari Om.